Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with another vlog and update video for you. In this one we're going to talk about my bomber jacket which you can see I've already completed and I'm totally loving it. Then we'll do a little bit of a yarn unboxing because I just got the box as I was headed out the door this morning so we'll open this up together. Then I want to catch you up on what's been going on on our homestead and that I recently launched a new video tutorial series on my YouTube channel here. It's called 12 Days of Last Minute DIY Gifts. So first up is my bomber jacket. This pattern is amazing. I'll include some pictures here of the front and the back so you can see it. But you can see it right here even on camera with me sitting down. It looks great. It fits me great. The collar is amazing. The fit, everything is just great about this jacket, okay? It's simple, simple enough that I would say a confident beginner can tackle. And I'm gonna be doing an online course, like a sew along that you can follow along with for this pattern. Now it includes sizes, I think it's like 2T to size 22 in women. So this is the same bomber jacket that I made for my daughter. I used the exact same pattern, but I just chose my size. And I made it with zero modifications. You can see that this pattern really works great. I mean, for all the sizes, it looks great on my seven-year-old daughter, and I think it looks great on me. <laughs> so the size that I cut out is a size Z. The pattern we're gonna be working with is Jolie's Charlie Bomber Jacket, and this is a pattern that we carry in our online shop. So stay tuned because in the next week or so, I'm gonna be releasing details for you to get in at an early bird sale price to sign up for the online course so along so that I can show you step-by-step step how to make this jacket. Now in that course, we're gonna be making it in a few different ways. The way that the pattern comes, it just has you make it unlined. So I'll open this up and you can see that's just the wrong side of this fabric. So it's unlined, which works out great for me. I live in Florida, so for just like a little cover up, you know, just to cut the, the wind and the chill off on a chilly night, this works great for me. But I will be teaching you in the online course how to make it lined for a more professional finish, plus an additional layer, right, if you need more warmth. And I'm also gonna show you how to make it reversible. Okay, so three different ways to make it and we'll talk all about different fabric choices because the fabrics that you use for the sleeves may not necessarily work for the cuffs and the fabric that you use for the front and back may not necessarily work for the cuffs, the collar or the waistband. So you have to understand stretch, uh, the differences in stretch and fiber content in stretch knits before you tackle a project like this to set yourself up for more successful results. So again, stay tuned for that information. I will be sending it out both in a YouTube video and then also on my email newsletter. If you're not subscribed to my email newsletter yet, go ahead and head over to my website. It's craftygemini.com and you'll see a link there telling you to subscribe to our email newsletter and you can sign up so that way you make sure that you catch up on everything that I'm sending out and you don't miss out on the early bird sale price for the new Charlie Bomber jacket so along that we're gonna be hosting. Now we're gonna move on to the unboxing and I ordered this stuff from Craftsy or formerly known as Craftsy Blueprint and I'll include a link for you below in case you wanna check out the site. They have a bunch of sales and I think I can't remember if I got this during their Cyber Monday sale or it was um, during their 12 days of whatever deals. You know, the, every day they have kind of like a door buster deal or something. But what happened was I have a pretty chunky yarn stash already and I wanted to talk about this to, to get your take on and see what you all think. Because I do mostly sewing and quilting, I clearly understand why I have to build up a stash of fabrics because a lot of times I'm working on scrappy projects or things that I need to grab multiple different prints and colors and things to coordinate to create the project. However, when it comes to crochet and knitting, I find that my chunky little yarn stash is not enough to make anything pretty much unless it's a hat, a cowl, or a scarf because I really only have one or two skeins of yarn of each color and weight, right, that matches, that coordinates. So I've been looking up tutorials and uh, patterns and things that I've been purchasing online for some really cute patterns, uh, both crochet and knitting for like cardigans, chunky ones, right, because I'm not starting with the super thin yarn yet. I have to like mentally prep myself and come down from the bulky to the worsted weight to then go DK. I have some fingering weight yarn and I touched it and I'm like, never. I'm never gonna have the patience to knit or crochet with this stuff, but I, I know that I will get there. So what happened here was that I realized that I am one of those people, and I think I've said this in the past in other videos, I'm one of those people, I feel like in quilting and garment sewing, there's two kinds of people. The people that have a pattern and project in mind, 
and they say, okay, I wanna make this dress, and then they go out and find the perfect fabric for the design and pattern they wanna make, or category number two, which I fall under, you're walking in the store and you're like, oh, I like this fabric. I have no idea what I'm gonna use it for, but I love it, so I'm gonna get two or three yards. So for quilting, I find that I typically will buy maybe a yard to two yards of fabric that's quilting cottons, because if I really love it, I'm gonna get enough and I know I'll be able to use it in something. When I'm making garments, I tend to buy more between the two and three yard range, especially if I have no idea whether I'm gonna use it for a dress or just for a top or for pants or what it's gonna be. So the same way that I build up my fabric stash, I have realized that I have to build up my yarn stash the same way. But instead of uh, buying just, oh, this is, this is cute yarn, let me buy two balls. I mean, two balls, I can't do nothing with two balls of yarn. So I've decided to stack up and purchase a bunch of different skeins of yarn of different colorways and, and uh, blends and hand dyes and all kinds of stuff. So of course, it's gonna get super pricey, but that way when I am struck with the feeling that I wanna knit a garment or knit something that takes more than one or two balls of yarn, I can go into my stash and I will have it. So let's open this up and see what's in here because frankly, I don't even remember what I ordered. <laughs> All right. So now looking at the yarn, I totally remember what I ordered. <laughs> Look at all these cool yarns. Okay, so again, I purchase multiple balls of each different type of yarn so that I actually have enough now to make something. So this is Sprightly Yarns, and I believe it, it does. It says it by Craftsy right here. This is their proprietary branded yarn, right? So this is a worsted weight yarn, and there's 190 yards on here, so 174 meters. There's 100 grams. I mean, it's a good size ball and it's a worsted weight. So in this colorway, and this is called Beach Bum, and I believe, oh yeah, it's 50% acrylic and 50% wool. So of course, if you get some acrylic in the blend, it's gonna be a little bit more affordable than going with the pricier ones, and since I'm still experimenting, uh, I just wanted to get some, some affordable blends that still were cute and have cool colors. Oh, so here are, let me see, I got one, two, three balls of this one, one, two, three balls of this colorway. And then this darker one, I really like the way these colors look. With these blues and, and kind of copper color here, I like that. It's called Keep Coasting, this one. So I got those. Then I have one, two, three, four balls of another one. This is another acrylic wool blend. This is 80% acrylic and 20% wool. This is a worsted weight, again, sprightly, so again, the same Craftsy brand, and 100 grams, one, two, three, four, in this neutral color, and I figured I would mix this up. I found a really cool pattern online for a striped crochet cardigan, and I got some of these colors with that project in mind, which is a first for me, since I never really plan the projects. But I did like the way that the colors looked on the computer screen, at least, and I thought, you know, even if I don't make that project, I know that I would still like it to make something else out of. So here you can see I got six balls of the same uh, the same acrylic wool, worsted weight, the 80% acrylic, 20% wool, and this color is called copper. And it has, it's like wine colored, but it has little speckles and kind of a blend in there of some goldish color. So I really like the way that that looked. And then the last ones that are in here are four balls, same yarn, the acrylic and wool blend, 80-20, but this is in a charcoal heather color. So this is really cool. And this is totally a color I can wear in all kinds of garments. And I might even mix these two up, or these two, I'm not sure yet, but I kind of got these in mind of some more neutrals that I could use for garments. Now, I will be honest, I purchased these because they were on sale. And I, I've recently got a couple questions on Instagram. Somebody was asking me what my take was on uh, natural fibers versus synthetics. I'm all about the natural fiber, but let's be real, it costs a lot more money. And when you're just learning or starting off or experimenting or designing something, I'm not one to spend or waste money on something that I, you know, it's gonna be experimental. The same way that we make our fabric projects, right? I get some, you know, lower quality, cheaper fabric, just experiment and play with and design stuff. And then I use my good stuff when I know the project is gonna turn out good. So I kind of feel the same way when it comes to yarn. So that's why I got these. They were a super ridiculously great price. I can't remember what it was, but I know that I bought it because it was on sale. 
And I think I'm, I have a lot here to get started in actually making some garments and something else that's bigger than just hats and scarves and cowls. All right, so that was a good little yarn stash builder box there. I am looking forward to working with it, but I've never actually worked with the Sprightly yarns before. I did have a look at the reviews when I was ordering, and most of them tend to be you know, great reviews. People really like working with them. Just at first glance, this 50-50 acrylic and wool blend is looking like I might have trouble. Eh, maybe not. I don't know, but it feels nice and soft. But if you have experience working with the Sprightly yarns, leave me a comment below and let me know either what you think about them, what you liked and disliked when you were working with it in your projects, and uh, whether or not you have a favorite blend. Because if they keep offering sales, I'm sure I will keep buying them and adding to my yarn stash. All right, and as far as knitting projects, I have been knitting up a storm. I've made several of those little washcloths that I showed y'all in the last vlog. They're super simple to make. I've made maybe four or five already. And I made a hat for my son. My first time knitting in the round, woohoo! Uh, it was super easy, it wasn't hard at all, but I did have to start the project like three times. You know, when you're making the ribbed uh, part for the bottom band, I don't know what, what happens to me that I can't keep the knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and then when I come around the row, I'm like, why am I knitting in the purls and purling in the knits? I just end up with seed stitch, but I don't like the way it looks. I do like the way that the, the ribbed uh, bottom edge looks. And so I just pulled it out three times until I really got the pattern in my head and focused on just knitting one and purling one. So that worked out great. After that, I made a hat for my daughter as well. She chose the yarn for that. Uh, it turned out super cute. And I did go ahead and make it a several rows longer so that we can fit her curly uh, ponytail in it, which next on my list is to make a uh, one of those ponytail hats that has the hole in it where you can pull your ponytail out through but I just wanted something to cover her whole head and all her curls. So that worked fine and she loves it. What else? I made a cowl for her too, um, using a really cool pattern that I found. Pretty simple, but still had a little textured finish along the side, so that was fun to make. Now I'm like, okay, I'm over making the hats and scarves and cowls and stuff, so I am ready to tackle my first garment. It even sounds a little daunting when I say it out loud, but I'm just gonna start off with some uh, bulky yarn, or super bulky, just something to get myself thinking along the lines of spending forever to knit multiple panels and then seaming them together. So if you have a beginner-friendly knitwear project that you would recommend for bulky or super bulky yarn, drop me a comment below, because I'm still adding a bunch to my list. I've found several that I like on Ravelry, and I purchased some off of Etsy from some knitwear designers, but I'm always looking for other ones, things that will whip up quickly and are beginner friendly, okay? Next, let's catch you up on what's been going on on our homestead. So for those that don't know, we homeschool and live on a little five acre farm, hobby farm for us here in North Central Florida. And one of our cows, Gracie, which is a two year old that we had, this is gonna be, her, this was her first baby. She actually gave birth to another little girl. We were so excited to see the little heifer calf pop out. We actually caught the whole thing on video. Um, I'll probably do another farm uh, vlog update video where I'll put all that details, all the details of that in there for those of you that are interested. But I just wanted to let y'all know that uh, we have a new little baby calf on our farm. The kids are loving, loving on her. She's so sweet. Mama's doing good, but as you can imagine and as you can see, her udder is quite engorged. So if you've been there, you can relate and I feel for her. So every day I'm massaging it uh, and trying to milk out as much as I can. It'll take a while for the edema to go down. And we're just super excited to have the opportunity again to milk our family cow, get our fresh raw milk on the farm, and to have another little baby that we can play with and we actually have two other cows that are pregnant, but they will be having their babies later on this winter. So Gracie was the first one to go, and so far, so good. All right, and that is all for this vlog update video. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below if you've worked with the Sprightly Yarns, uh, if you are interested in signing up for the Bomber Jacket class, remember to sign up for my email newsletter list. I will be coming to you with another video on that. And then also a reminder that my 12 days of last minute DIY gifts video series has already begun. We are currently on day four. I'll include a link for you below, but since you're right here on YouTube, you can also just click on my channel and the four most latest videos that I've uploaded are those projects. We have so far a crocheted headband that's super quick and easy to make. Even if you've never crocheted before, you can totally do it. Then we have a textured zipper pouch, which I absolutely love. 
Then we have a five minute gift card holder and I also made these really cute, quick and easy drawstring pouches that I can make in less than five minutes. So we're all about the quickie, quickie handmade projects this time around of the year so we can get our last minute holiday gifts in. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit it with the thumbs up below, share it with your crafty friends, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.